what's up? Welcome to Gearhead Syndrome. I got a friend Rob here and he's agreed to show me this amazing car that just brought it out this past spring and I've been in love with it ever since I saw it at Speed Sport. Uh, I've been following a little bit on the on the social medias of you finishing this thing up. So we're going to talk a bit, a bit about this and his love for Camaros. And uh, yeah, so how did you come across this particular car? What's the backstory to uh, uh, your it's, hands on this? It's, it has a pretty substantial backstory. Uh, essentially, back before Facebook was popular, uh, there used to be like uh, some websites called like Car Domain and, and stuff like that. Okay. So back in the in the late 90s and the early 2000s. So the original owner of this car, uh, his name is Guillaume Sirois. He's uh, from Quebec. Okay. Um, he started building this car in 2003. He, he'd had the car since he was 18, and he just wanted to start doing something kind of wild with it. Yeah. And it started showing up on the car domain sites uh, everywhere, and it really started taking off just because of the, the of the amount of work that was being done on the car. Uh, I started following the car, and and as many people later started having screenshots of the car set up for their computers and screenshots uh, of everything that they were doing with the car. And around 2010, uh, it just disappeared. Um, I had no idea where it went to. I had no idea where it was from. And this was already like on online, was becoming like the prototype for everyone that had this generation. Well, of Carol, before like, the car was even finished, uh, it had already been featured in a, in, a, in a magazine. Before it was done. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it was quality work being done to it that everyone was like going nuts over. Yes, so it, it had a lot of people following the car, uh, myself included, and essentially, uh, Fast forward, you know, 13 years, and it popped up in a for sale ad, and I, I had no idea. I was like, "Oh, geez, I hadn't seen that car since 2010." And it was unfinished, but it was in the same spot that it was in 2010. He didn't want to take it out until it was finished, and he was very adamant about being specific with how it was done. Um, as I'll, I'll show you after we go, it's uh, it's painstakingly amount of time and effort put into this car between the two of us. Yeah, having seen it at the show, it's, it is, I can't think of a, a nicer, uh, like, Camaro from this era. It's it's the nicest one I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Uh, so basically what had happened, once I seen it for sale, uh, I wasn't a buyer at the moment. I already had uh, several Camaros of my own, and uh, I was just doing my thing, but I reached out to him just to say hi, because I remembered, you know, countless hours of, you know, daydreaming kind of how I was going to build my current cars and taking kind of bits from everybody else's cars to kind of build your own. So when I seen it show back up again, I was more or less just calling and messaging me just to say, hey, you know, it's nice to see that car again. Whatever happened to it? Following it all along. Yeah, and it just disappeared. So basically at that point, I was just talking back and forth with them saying, basically, I hope that you find a great buyer for it. I shared some of the builds that I had done, some of them based off of this car. Yeah. And uh, I have another 88 Camaro that uh, I'm in the process of building right now that I was literally just pulling the trigger on to start painting it white and, and a theme based on this car. So it was kind okay. of really crazy when it came up for sale. But uh, at first, like I said, I, I wasn't a buyer. Uh, I was just kind of a fan and wanted to let them know that it was pretty cool. And a couple of days went by and uh, essentially the more and more I thought about it, I was like, geez, I had one of my cars, it was a 2001 Camaro, and I thought if I could possibly sell it in a quick enough fashion it would be just around the same price point that i, I would <laughs> yeah. be needing to, to go pick this up right? i just had this crazy idea i didn't tell anybody about it i just put my 2001 for sale and uh it sold within 12 hours and you're like oh now i'm a buyer well and not not even so much still uh, at that time i was going through some personal things with my family and basically during that time i lost my father so at that time i had just kind of was like processing life and what it was important and he'd always kind of told me like live life, live experiences, do things that you want to do and, and don't have any regrets. So as I sat there with this envelope of money after I sold my car, I was sitting down in front of my 88 that I'm still currently building. And I just kind of thought to myself, can I finish this car with the amount of money that I have in my pocket the way that I want it to be finished? And the answer ultimately was no. But uh, I reached out and I said, listen, I said, I, I've reconsidered and I've kind of actually become a buyer now instead of a, just a dreamer or a, a fan. And uh, he said, well, there's somebody coming and look at it tonight. And I said, of course. And I said, <laughs> and but you're doing the math. Wait, it's a 10 hour drive. If I leave right now. Uh... That was pretty much it. So, you know, going through a going through an end of a life experience with a family member, it does take some time to do all the paperwork and all the, the, you know, the legal end of things. And I kind of just told my mom, I said, Mama, if, if we can get this finished up by 
you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. It was a, it was a Monday at that point. I said, I, I think I'm going to go up there and pick that up. And she said, you really should. You deserve you deserve that car. And yeah, it became your way of embodying kind of what your dad. It really was. Your, yeah, what he passed on to you for a way to go about your life. Like, yeah, I can do it now. So I reached out to my um, brother and I said, listen, I got a crazy idea. I'm leaving Thursday. I'm going up and I'm going to pick up a car and I'm, I'm going to bring it back. And I said, it's going to be a crazy experience, but I'd love you to come along. And it was a great opportunity for us to bond over our uh, going through what we were doing. And your family was like, this is what dad would want. Well, they, they, they knew what I was doing and they, and they knew exactly how he lived. So uh, essence, we packed up Thursday morning and loaded the trailer and we took off. And uh, when we got to the house, uh, it wasn't finished. Uh, there was there was lots of lots of things that were left unfinished. But when I looked at the project, I was like, I couldn't help but spend, you know, a good 45 to an hour in this house. And we went from top front to back, top to bottom, just kind of really uh, exploring what he had what he had done to that point. At the time I had a warehouse full of parts and I knew that I could finish the job with what I what I needed and do it the way I wanted to. I wanted to bring it out and show it properly because it had gained so much kind of notoriety through the 2000s that nobody had ever seen the car. It just it, went away. It just went away. We went at finishing up over the winter, uh, a lot of the interior and wiring and engine bay suspension stuff we kind of got completed. And uh, it came out for its first drive on the day that we brought it to the Moncton Speed Sport. Uh, we were lucky enough to come away with a win at the show. So it had a different look to it, but when I when I looked at kind of doing a theme, the Stormtroopers were kind of the, the a theme that I felt was kind of relevant with the 40th anniversary of the Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi and uh, having built another Camaro the year before, which kind of like a Darth Vader black one. This one was kind of like a purpose built for this year to, to, to bring it to some shows and, and as a Stormtroopers theme. I see you've done like a lot of little subtle things that might, some people might not notice. There's even still stuff I'm noticing now just standing here looking at it. I don't know, I think I noticed in the past that you'd shaved the door handles. So uh, it went through a, a very long process, a rotisserie build. Uh, all of the ground effects were filled, so there's no emblems. Um, yeah, because where the emblems were, there, there was like a little. There was always set. an inset. Okay, yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, door handles were removed. The locks were removed. The gas door was removed. Gas door too. Yeah. Oh, how do you fill her now? Uh, so it has a fuel cell that's inside. So we, we opened the hatch. Okay. Uh, all the engine bay was shaved. Um, did a full wire tuck, so there's no wires that you see in the engine bay. And then uh, essentially uh, the bottom is finished the same as this. It's got uh, three coats of clear coat on a finished uh, bodywork. While it was there, like every single bolt and nut in this car down to like the nuts that hold the sun visor, uh, everything is new. Okay. So, you know, one of the fortunate things about this process was I had built, you know, a couple dozen of these cars over the years. So there was nothing that I wouldn't have had to begin with but everything was already provided and new, so yeah. I just had to put it together. Walk me through, uh, on the front end here, it's got updated headlights for sure, those LEDs. So the, enti the entire car is all LED uh, framework, so all the headlights, all the turn signals, uh, interior lights. Uh, I did some kind of trick uh, lighting in the in the the mirrors. We, we had some LEDs put in behind the mirrors. Oh, that is cool. So just, it, yeah, because it's all just, painted white on the inside, so it glows. Uh, so basically in the front, uh, it's LS1 swapped. Uh, it come out of a Corvette as a shell, but it was sent to an engine bay, uh, an engine specialist, and he had redone the entire motor. So it's forge crank, pistons, rods. It's, it's completely built. Uh, it made 522 horsepower, so it's uh, it's very healthy. Yeah, that sounds all right. Uh, <laughs> long tube headers, uh, Stainless Works is the company that provides those. Uh, all the suspension is all tubular UMI, so it's uh, front to back, all the control arms, all the sway bars. This uh, this car will scare you how how solid it drives around uh, turns. Uh, it's it's like a freight train on rails. Yeah, people see these and they expect to see a mullet. What we're actually looking at is a really well handled <laughs> car. Well, a, a couple of key components to that. <laughs> It's like, look, my vehicle matches yeah. the black and white. A <laughs> uh, couple of key components that make that happen is uh, it's all uh, all on air. So front and back, uh, airbags. The uh, So with the lowered stance of this car, um, 
it already improves what was already a good handling car. Yeah, it's like a good platform to start from, and now it's all modern, updated engineering for like two-door suspension. Yeah, so all the joints are all Heim joints. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty rough drive, but it's kind of purpose-built to be able to go race and, and do turns and yeah. have some fun with it. Is there any plans for autocross in the future? Oh, I've already have, yeah. You, you have, okay. Yeah. I'm planning. Uh, I'm That's planning awesome. next year to do uh, several of the events here in New Brunswick for the autocross. Yes. Yeah. I I want to I want to take it to all the events, inclusive the automotive. So you know, drag events for the quarter mile. It's fast as it is, but yeah. uh, autocross, uh, whatever whatever I can get in, into and, and go driving. It's uh, it's, it's purpose built. So. Yeah. But through the suspension, uh, in the back, like everything is connected from front to back, subframe bars. There's tubular suspension and an aftermarket rear end in the back. Um, it's an upgraded uh, T56 uh, transmission, so six speed. Yeah. So, well, there's induction in the future. There's there's a boost gauge here and a nitrous gauge here for a purpose, for, for a reason. <laughs> to be, to be, to be, like, it's to be continued. To be continued yeah. yeah. It's getting a forced induction this winter. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we will follow along for the update. Please yeah. subscribe. <laughs> there's a, I have a twin turbo set up in the garage that's going in over the winter. So. Holy shit. That's awesome. It's not done yet. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, going fast is one thing, but uh, I like to be safe with it too. So safety with this car was an important thing to make sure that it can stop well and also be safe inside. So if I am on a track somewhere or doing something that I, that I can be safe. Yeah. Um, you got a family. You know, absolutely. So uh, all the brakes were upgraded to C6 uh, Corvette uh, yeah. rotors and uh, brake system. It stops uh, extremely well. You know, roll cage, the seats, the harnesses and stuff just to make it uh, a little more safer inside. Yeah, which I'm thankful for because you're going to bring me for a ride. Yeah, for sure. Well, I heard the audio that comes out of the tailpipe. Yeah, that's my audio right oh, now. Oh my God, that is amazing. So a couple of the key things inside, essentially in the, in the center console, um, we uh, we put the air ride center uh, and controls right above the shifter so it's easy to access. Yeah. Uh, molded in uh, the new stereo deck which is essentially a full tablet uh, and then above in the vents we took the vents out and, and modified them to, to house the air fuel mixture okay. and then all the dash was upgraded with uh, a set of automator gauges but they're they don't belong there's a full custom block for it okay. and then uh, where the cigarette lighter typically is is integrated into a shift light, shift light yeah okay. and then below that is the electronic dump exhaust Oh, so you got cutouts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. So everything inside was was done. Uh, all new carpets, new headliner, seat buckles, seats, pretty much everything in the, in the whole thing. Yeah, it's like fantastic seats. That's They're comfortable. That I think got yeah. To. So door access is all, all poppers on a remote. So uh, because there's no handles. Is there any hidden poppers if your batteries die? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a redundant system in the car, so if okay. that does happen. You know where they are. We won't know yeah. Where they are. <laughs> uh, so and this is how you steal it. There you go. A couple of things that uh, are things that you see but never understand about the amount of time that was put into this car. Um, GM, through these eras of time, were always known for their cheap plastic interiors. Um, every piece of interior was all vinyl wrapped. This is all a vinyl wrap for every every single piece in the car. That's a lot of work. That's yeah. a lot of expense too. It's so it, for each piece. Yeah, everything here, like every everything was all vinyl wrapped. Yeah. So a, a long strenuous uh, process of heat and, and molding and heat and bending and heat and flexing. Sure so this is the access of the fuel door. And then you've got. That's, that's a, a purge that, oh, for that's the true. air tanks. Ooh. 